The more videotapes I capture and archive to digital formats, the more I am running into something that I didn't think I'd see after 30 years, mold. If you store a tape incorrectly in a damp basement, for example, mold can grow, and here you can see white mold spores, and this is definitely not something you want to run through your capture VCR. It will not only produce a subpar capture, but you could also permanently damage the heads of your VCR. So we're going to have to clean this off before we capture the tape. Now, there are professional units designed for cleaning tapes. Here's the RTI tape check. And these are fantastic. However, as you can see from the price list, they are meant for professionals and definitely outside of the realm of use for consumers. So is there a method that we as consumers can use for ourselves? I believe I've come up with one, and it involves the use of a donor VCR. Some VCR you don't care about. It doesn't even need to be able to play tape correctly, but it does need to work. And also the use of microfiber lint-free cloths. And I chose black cloths in particular for this because, uh, for well, for reasons you'll see later. Now the process involves using the donor VCR to extend the tape out of the cassette and use its transport mechanism to move the tape so that you can use the microfiber lint-free cloths to clean the mold off. And to uh, start this process, obviously you're going to have to disassemble the VCR. Now not completely, you just need to get the case off of the top, uh, usually it's a single metal piece uh, or it might be uh, one half of plastic, but it's as easy as removing the screws and uh, it's not uh, too terribly difficult. Sometimes you have to lift up a little tab in order to get the top off. Here you can see me doing just that with this donor VCR. And uh, once you're done with that, uh, you'll be ready to start. All VCRs use a rotary tape head, and that's, this is the head you see here. When we put a cassette in, two spindles will push the tape out and wrap it across the head. And here you can see two points where the tape is going on the left side and on the right side of one spindle. And in fact, I'll illustrate them here. Here is one side, and down here is the other. And it is at these two points that we will very lightly press the cloths uh, to clean the tape as it goes through the mechanism. Here I've just simply wrapped the cloths around uh, each of my fingers, although of course if you do this you'll probably need a third person to hit the uh, fast forward and rewind buttons for you, but uh, you very lightly press against these two points on both sides of the tape so that you can get the mold in a single pass. And uh, with only one pass you can see that we've actually done pretty well. This is what this looks like. Now some people use their fingers, some people use uh, wrap it around pens or pencils, you should use whatever works for you but it'll probably take several passes. And here you can see the result of some several passes. Uh, and now you see why I chose black claws. It's because it makes it easier to see the mold. Now, once you've cleaned the mold off the surface of the tape, unfortunately, the mold started by growing on top of the tape. And as you fast forward and rewound, the mold was flung off of the tape and thrown all around the inside of the cassette. And the only way to fix that is to take it apart and clean the mold out of there. And you really do want to do that because, again, you don't want mold floating around your good capture VCR. So this is relatively easy to do. Most of the tapes you'll want to save are tapes that you yourself recorded. They have family memories or something like that on them. And most consumer videotapes are very easy to disassemble simply by removing some screws. Now, you always start with the tape face down so that you can get access to the screws, but don't pick it up like this. And the reason is if you pick it straight up like this, the reels will fall out and you'll have a mess on your hands. So when you're ready to take it apart, Grab it with both hands, keep the halves together as you flip it over. Now it's a simple matter of just taking the top off the cassette. But that's not the end of it. You also have to take the reels out if you're going to get access to both halves of the cassette to clean all that mold out. And you really do want to do that because you don't want all those spores flying around your VCR when you're trying to capture it. Uh, taking the reels out is relatively simple. There's a ratcheting mechanism on the bottom of the tape, and you may have to move those out of the way in order to get the reels out. Please be careful with the reels. Uh, the tape is, of course, very fragile. And it also helps to have it rewound or fast-forwarded all the way so that if you do crinkle the tape, you're not damaging uh, anything in the middle. And here you can see how bad the mold is. Now, a lot of this flew off when we were doing our fast-forward rewind uh, clean operation. Um, but you still need to clean them out because otherwise they're just going to get back onto the tape. 
Uh, here, it also helps to make sure that you've got all of the tape completely wound out of the reel that you want to be cleaning. Now, it doesn't look like there's too much here on the inside of the reel, and it's a little harder to see even with the black cloth, but this is where all of the mold originally grew on top of the tape, and uh, you really got to get it all out of here. Um, otherwise, like I said, it's just going to get back on the tape. With everything clean, you can put it back in the cassette. Please be careful to observe the original way that the tape wound around the spindles inside the cassette. Uh, doing it the wrong way will damage the tape as soon as you put it inside your VCR. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just make sure that it's on the outer edge of both topmost spindles. It's pretty easy to see. Here you can see me doing it to the other side. And uh, again, be very, very careful. If you do crinkle the tape, it's all the way fast forwarded or rewound. So it's not the end of the world, but do try to be careful. And then once it's back in, tension the tape as much as you can before you put the top half back on the cassette. Doing so is a simple matter of just dropping it down. Uh, sometimes if you keep catching the tape, it can help to angle it on. So here you can see me angling the top back on so as not to crinkle the tape. And then once that's done, uh, you simply put it back together the same way. Hold both halves together. Uh, here you can see me pressing in the little button on the side to move the cover so I can just make sure that it looks okay, that, it, that I wound it around the spindles uh, correctly. And then you push it down on the table and put the screws back in. The reason you have to push it down is because there's a little bar on the top shell that springs it apart. So you have to push it down to keep it together. Uh, after you do the first screw though, and I like to start with the one in the middle just to make it even, you can then let go. Here you see me letting go to put all the screws back in. So how did we do? I think pretty well. The mold is gone from the top of the tape and hopefully also the surface of the tape. Uh, if you look very closely, you can see little white spidery, spindly etchings in the plastic. That's not mold, it's not on the tape. It's just etching into the plastic the mold made when it was growing on the surface of the plastic. Overall, this is a very clean tape now. And uh, for being a consumer and making a consumer archival effort, I think, uh, this worked out very well, and this is the method that I use personally. Well, I hope this was educational and will help you restore your own videotapes. Uh, if you're interested in capturing videotape correctly for archival and processing all the fields in videotape so that it retains its smoothness of motion, I made a different video a couple of years ago that goes over that process in detail. So if this was helpful to you, you may find that helpful as well. Now this channel is actually supposed to be more about restoring vintage computers, not videotape. So if restoring vintage computers and using them and learning about vintage computer history is something that appeals to you, you might want to subscribe to catch those videos in the future.